Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. At a local restaurant, where my friends and I often gather for lunch, the maitre d gives me sometimes the restaurant trade journals he receives in the mail. A trade journal is a magazine that's designed specifically for a business or an industry. You don't see those magazines on the magazine rack in the grocery store. And in there are often recipes that are written by chefs who cook this food for their restaurant. So you get some restaurant recipes. And that's what I want to do today. I want to make something called lamb chops salt and boca. It's a little expensive. I spent nearly $50 on the lamb. But for something special, I think this is a really nice dish to experiment with. So let's get into the ingredients I'm going to use. You need two racks of lamb, eight chops each, and you need to French them, which means clean them all up, trim them, clean up the bones, and then you save that trim for making the stock that's gonna be used in this recipe. These are already Frenched, so I'm, I'm not gonna have any trim, so I took out of the freezer a little bit of my lamb meat. I can use that for making my stock. You're gonna cut these into double chops so that there's two bones per serving. And then you need six to eight garlic cloves depending upon the size. Two shallots. I don't have any fresh shallots. What I do is I buy shallots in bulk sometimes and then I will caramelize them and put them in the freezer. So these are my caramelized shallots and that's what you need for this recipe is caramelized shallots. We'll talk about that when we get to the shallots. And then one quarter cup of dry white wine, salt and freshly ground black pepper to taste. 8 slices of thinly sliced prosciutto, olive oil for frying, 3 or 4 bay leaves, and then finally 4 ounces, which is 113 grams of butter. Here is one of my two racks of lamb. If you're not familiar with the term Frenching, this is Frenching, where the bones have all been cleaned, it's been cut off nicely, everything's been scraped clean to give it a nice appearance. If you buy a rack of lamb that isn't Frenched, you would clean up your bones like this and then save all that trim for making the stock. As I said, these have been pre-Frenched, so I don't have any trim, and therefore I'm using some of the lamb meat that I have in my freezer. I've been heating a heavy saucepan here on the stove over a medium heat. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to that, a few tablespoons, maybe a tablespoon or two. And I'm going to put my garlic in there and my meat. I did put a little bit of trim off that, put a little bit of trim off those bones, but not enough to make any difference. And then I'm going to be cooking these over medium heat. I'm going to cover this. You can do this in the oven. In fact, the original recipe said to do it in the oven, but it's July. I'm not going to start the oven if I don't have to. You can see that this meat is already pretty well cooked. I want to brown this down quite a bit and give myself a fond. The fond is the brown bits that stick to the bottom of the pan. I'll be deglazing the pan in a later step, but that's going to help to flavor my stock. So I'm going to cook this about 8 to 10 minutes. I'll reduce my heat once this really gets going, reduce it down to medium low, and kind of just saute this until things are nicely browned, including the garlic. So my meat has been cooking. Actually, I did this for 15 minutes because after the first six, seven minutes, I decided I didn't have enough browning in there. You can see that meat browned up very nicely. So I'm gonna take the meat out put this aside. I'm going to save this meat because I can use it later on when making the stock. And now what you would do at this point normally is you would take your shallots and you would slice them up very thinly. Mine are already caramelized. And you would put them in the oil and cook them for a good 10 minutes until they start to brown. It's just like caramelizing onions. In my case, because my shallots are already caramelized, I'm going to cook this for just two or three minutes, maybe darken the shallots a little bit more, and then that'll finish the shallots. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. 
So you can see I got some nice browning in the bottom. That The shallots really cooked down and, and um, stuck well to the bottom, giving me some nice fond there. I'm going to lift out my garlic here and set it aside. Bring my heat back up. medium medium high and then add my wine and what that'll do is that'll deglaze the pan and get those brown bits all up and I want to simmer this once it comes up to boiling simmer this until I reduce that liquid down to about a third of what it was so that liquid now is reduced quite a bit and you can see all the brown bits have come up off the bottom. The brown bit, bits are what we call the fond. So I'm going to put my meat back in there. And then you can use water. If I can use stock, I'm going to use stock. And you want to just put in enough stock to cover your meat. That's good the bay leaves in there and then I'm going to cover this and simmer this slowly checking it for volume if this boils down too much I'll add more stock or water and I'm going to simmer this for about 45 minutes to really work those flavors from the meat and the bay leaves and the fond into those juices Wonderful. This has been simmering now for 45 minutes. I checked it every 15 minutes and I did add more stock. I put in a total of one cup of stock and I may add more liquid later because I need enough jus, enough juice for eight servings. That might be enough. So I'm going to let this cool now a little bit and then I'm going to strain this and taste it and adjust it for salt. I'm using a filter here that I bought. This is a coffee filter that I bought in a grocery store or department store. I'm going to use that to filter my stock here that's cooled down. It's not going to filter easily. And I may have to do this more than once to get all these juices to filter. The mesh is so fine that it tends to clog the filter easily. And that's going to be my jus for my lamb. So as you can see, I got very little jus out of that, but that's very concentrated. It's barely a quarter cup there. So I made up a little more beef stock. It's always good to have little tricks like this when you need them. I shouldn't need much more than that. That should be plenty for my eight. And I, even if I have to mix up some more, I can. I had returned my lamb back to the refrigerator because I know I wasn't going to get to it for a while. Get some paper towel here for my hands. And as I mentioned earlier, I need to divide these into double chops. It's funny, the original recipe said this feeds four. Can you imagine eating two of these? That's a lot of meat there. And yes, that's a noisy plane going overhead because I live near the airport. This is a trailer park, folks. Not a fancy house out in the Hamptons. I'm drinking coffee as I'm doing this too. And that has nothing to do with being in a trailer park. Okay, so. I want to lightly salt these. And the reason why I'm salting these lightly is because the prosciutto is going to have salt in it. And I don't want to over salt my lamb and then pepper these well. I mean, you don't have to just, you know, cover them completely in pepper. And then taking a slice of prosciutto. 
I like this prosciutto because it comes with these plastic dividers in there and it separates so nicely. Clean my workspace there. And then surround it with prosciutto. That is going to be a beautiful piece of lamb. And then finally to help that to stay together, The original recipe did not call for this, but I'm thinking it would be appropriate to just put a piece of string around it, kitchen twine. And there it is. That is ready to brown. I'm going to brown this on all four sides in skillets. I have all my other ones to do. If you don't have a big enough skillet, you can do them in small batches. If you have large skillets like I have, you might be able to do them all at once. I wanted, just see this, wanted you to see this end piece. Big piece of meat on the side there. Pieces like that. When I do cooking like this, and it's not for like special guests, I call those best pieces. Chef's reward. That's what I get to eat. This is the one that goes on my plate. I and mean, if you've got a special guest coming, you want to give them the best of the meal, but if they're just nobodies showing up to be fed, then you keep the chef's reward for yourself. There is my lamb ready to go into skillets. I have two skillets heating on the stove, so my next step is to brown these. I've got my skillets heating on the stove, so I'm going to put some olive oil in there, a tablespoon or two. Give that a swirl to distribute it around. And then I'm going to place my lamb chops in there. Without overcrowding it. And I'm going to just watch them closely and brown them on at least three of the four sides. I don't know that the bottom bone side needs to be browned. So there are my lamb chops nicely browned. To finish these up, I'm going to divide my butter up between my two skillets here. Let that melt in there. And then I want to put my garlic back in there. This is the garlic that I roasted earlier. And then I want to cover these pans. And I want to watch these and I want to cook these to an internal temperature of between 130 and 135. At 135 they're considered to be medium rare, which is how I like my lamb. So I have a digital thermometer and I'll be checking these periodically. I did brown these over medium heat, by the way, just in case you're wondering what meat, what heat I use to brown the chops. One way I would serve this is over a mound of mashed potatoes. If I had green vegetables, I would put those on the side. I have a recipe on the website for oven roasted vegetables. That would really be good with this. And then I have been heating my au jus liquid in a separate pan. Put that over the top, let it pool on the plate, and that is ready to cut open and see how good it tastes. All right, let's see what this looks like inside. It 
Oh, beautiful pink inside. Look at that. Having a difficult time getting down through that bone. But that's all right. I can spread that open and then cut through it. There it is. Beautiful pink inside. Nice, medium rare. That is a beautiful lamb chop. Last step is to see how this tastes. Okay, here we go. I love lamb, and I really like lamb chops. Rack of lamb. Hmm, that is so tender. Oh, that is very delicious. I want to taste my mashed potatoes here. Mmm, okay. Rack of lamb with fresh mashed potatoes. As I said, the only thing that might make this better is my oven roasted vegetables, so excuse me, but I'm going to go enjoy my dinner. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.